38. <clears throat> 2, 3, 8. To God be the glory, great things he hath done, so loved he the world that he gave us his Son, to yield in his life an atonement for sin, and open the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord. For the prayer, be number 446. 446. I care not today what the morrow may bring, him shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth for everything, and all of my worry is vain. Living by faith in Jesus above. Oh, I'm saying, in a shepherding 
Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the many blessings that you have given us. We thank you for the rain that you have sent our way. We thank you, God, for this time that we have now to come here and to study your word and to worship you. We pray, God, that our worship will be pleasing to you and according to your word. We thank you, God, for the, the church that meets here in Bremen. Pray that you'll continue to help us to grow spiritually and numerically. I pray that you will be with our elders and their families. I pray that you will give them the wisdom that they need to make the decisions that they need to make. I pray that you'll continue to be with all those who work behind the scenes here and the work that they do. We pray that you'll continue to bless them. I pray that you'll be with our deacons and the works that they're involved with. I pray that you will also bless them Bless our Bible school teachers. I pray that God that you will be with those of our number who are traveling. We pray that they may get to their destination safely and pray that you will return them to us safely. Please be with those who are sick. Pray that you will restore them to their much wanted and needed help. We're also aware, God, that there are some who have lost loved ones, we pray that you will be with them through, through this time and that you will comfort them in the way that only you know how. Watch over us and keep us safe. We pray that you will also be with Johnny as he brings the, the message to us this evening. We pray that you will be with him and help him to remember those things that he has studied and that he has prepared to say and that he may bring them and teach it, tell it to us in such a way that we will easily understand it and that we will be able to apply it to our lives. We'll also pray that you will be with Sydney and Nam while they're away and that you will keep them safe and bring them back to us. Watch over us and keep us safe. Please forgive us when we do wrong. Of course, in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Number 616. <clears throat> Six one six. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the ransom will shine, I want a gold one that silver. of us. 
city. I want a mansion, a robe and a crown. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder, we will never more wander, but walk the streets that are pure as gold. If you were marked number 227, we'll sing this as the imitation hymn after the lesson this evening. 227. Which stand at turn number 130. 130. Brightly beams our Father's mercy from the light house evermore. But to us He gives the keeping of the lights along the shore. Let the Good evening. Something happened just a minute ago that's never happened before. My wife leaned over to me and said, it feels warm in here. <laughs> she's never been warm before. I don't know what that means, if she's getting a fever or if it's hot. I don't know. How do y'all feel? Does it feel okay? All right. Kind of warm up here. <laughs> uh, if somebody were to jump up and adjust the thermostat, that might. But... Uh, we got a lot of good things going on here at Bremen, amen? Uh, chili cook-off last night, had a skating party this afternoon. I've heard some excellent reports and interesting information from that endeavor. Appreciate the Brothers Keeper group for taking our young people on uh, that little adventure. And um, that is good stuff. We, we have fine, a fine group of young people here at Bremen. And uh, I am encouraged uh, constantly by... Uh, the things that they want to be involved in, anything that we give them to be involved in, they are going to uh, be uh, ready to do that and take it on wholeheartedly. Um, we've already had uh, some good production from our 
Lads to Leaders program this year with some of the pre-convention events that some of them have taken place or have taken part in. And uh, Morgan and Madison already took their Bible Bowl test because they had to go out of town. We've got so, uh, six more of them that are going to sit for the Bible Bowl exam this evening and, and, and get a chance to um, test their knowledge of James and First and Second Peter. And they've done a great job preparing and studying for that and I think will represent us very well at the Convention and Bible Bowl, a new thing for us this year. Spoke about the uh, pre-convention uh, opportunities and uh, one of them is the PowerPoint presentations. And this year, uh, a couple of our... Uh, leaderettes uh, did PowerPoints. The PowerPoints come from the Pearl series called, it's a 13 lesson series, this of course uh, drawn from James and First and Second Peter and all of the things that we are called to do as Christians. And the lesson this evening will be from one of those lessons written by a man named Gail Nelson who is a, a minister at the Miami Gardens Church of Christ and on the uh, Lads to Leaders National Board. And the PowerPoint slides were put together by Olivia McDaniel and edited by her dad and uh, will be used this evening for our lesson. So a little, something a little different, uh, but, but uh, a great lesson from 1 Peter 2, verses 1 and 2, called to desire the Word. And these young people desire to learn more about God's Word, and I am encouraged by uh, their efforts to do so. All of our youth uh, do a great job. Uh, so this, this evening, we have uh, called to desire the word, 1 Peter 2, 1 and 2, therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and evil speaking, as newborn babes, comma, and that's a comma, I always tend to go right through that particular comma, as newborn babes, in other words, like newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. And like our lesson this morning, we have begun with the word therefore. Therefore, we know that there was something that came before. And in this particular case, in the book of 1 Peter, uh, the first chapter, uh, 1 Peter is also written to early Christians who were suffering. Uh, in this case, very uh, uh, difficult persecutions, and Peter's message to them was to, to, again, to endure. And in verse 22 of chapter 1, he says, Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. We'll revisit that in a moment. Through the word of God, which lives and abides forever, because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the fl as the flower of the grass. The grass withers and his flowers fall away. And then here, I believe, is the part that uh, we get to that brings the therefore, the conclusion uh, is being drawn on this. The word of the Lord, verse 25, verse chapter 1, the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word of the Lord by which the gospel was preached to you. Therefore, desire or lay aside all malice, uh, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, evil speaking as newborn babes, Desire the pure milk of the word. Desire the pure milk of the word. As a newborn babe desires that. Now, we've, uh, we've had, we haven't had a, a, a newborn babe here in the congregation for a little while, but we got some on the way, and that's good. Uh, and I remember uh, when all three of ours were newborn babes, and, and they had to have that milk. In fact, Olivia and Victoria were premature. They were born at 32 and a half weeks. And um, because they were itty-bitty, they couldn't hold a lot, and they had to be fed very often, every two hours for about the first month and a half, uh, around the clock, and uh, about the time that I had reached utter exhaustion and uh, was not being able to function during the day, they started getting uh, to where they could go a little longer, and before long they were sleeping through the night. But a baby needs that milk, and will let you know, uh, quick, fast, and in a hurry, that they are hungry. They have to have it. And this is the idea that Peter is giving to us uh, in this scripture. Um, a newborn baby is brought into the world, and as Christians, we are born again into Christ. Um, 
The concept of a growing child. That baby, when they first come, they need that milk. They desire that milk, and they have to have it to grow. And eventually they will grow. Uh, Olivia and Victoria were respectively 3 pounds, 15 ounces, and 4 pounds and 14. Sorry if I'm embarrassing y'all girls. Uh, 4 pounds and 14 ounces. Uh, together, they didn't even weigh 8 pounds. Um, and they were about this long, and now they're about this tall. So uh, they have, along the way, gotten some nourishment from somewhere. This is necessary uh, to grow. Christians are, are born into the world, and they need, they are born into Christ, and we need this nourishment as well. So this is the idea behind uh, this scripture and the lesson this evening. But first, we got to lay aside uh, the junk, right? We have to get rid of the, the bad nourishment, and that's where the malice, deceit, envy, hypocrisy, evil speaking, and all those things come in, and we will uh, visit that uh, again as well in a moment. As Christians were born again, 1 Peter 1, 23 says, having been born not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. And this is... Uh, important to the Christian. This is the source of our spiritual nourishment. The baby needs the milk. The Christian needs the word. We learn from it how to be born again. From hearing God's word, we, we b begin to develop a faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We develop this belief uh, that the Bible is the inspired word of God, that it comes from God, and we believe, begin to believe what it says about God and about his relationship to us. We begin to believe that. We believe specifically that gospel story, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he left his home in heaven, uh, First Peter, or, uh, Philippians 2, verse 5, and came to earth to live a perfect life, a sinless life, to become the sacrifice for our sins. And when we believe that Jesus Christ was God's Son, and that he came down and did that for us, and had to go to the cross to become sin for us, be separated for a time from his Father. We begin to believe this and we understand that he became sin for us and that it was our sin that put him on that cross. That causes us to begin to want to repent, turn away from. The Greek word metanoeo, it's it, it, it implies a turning completely around and leaving something behind. This is repentance. And if we're willing to do those things, we're certainly willing to stand before God and before other witnesses and confess that specific belief that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and be born again through the water of baptism, uh, putting on Christ. This is, uh, this is that spiritual nourishment and where it gets us in the growth process in becoming a Christian. But it doesn't stop there, of course. We need to continue to desire that uh, sincere milk of the word. John 3, verses 3 through 5, in this great account of Jesus and his conversation with Nicodemus, it says, Jesus answered to him and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So we have this idea of a birth taking place. And in this conversation with Nicodemus, this is the illustration that Jesus uses. He uses this idea of birth from water, uh, and he applies that to the spiritual nature of man. In the physical birth process, we understand that a seed is planted. Uh, not a biology lesson this evening, but we do understand, of course, through God's wisdom and creation, he, he planned for a husband and a wife to come together and, and, and for children to be born from that, a seed would have to be planted. The seed uh, would produce life when it came and found purchase in that fertile, uh, fertile ground. And then from that life, there would be a, a birth out of water. When that water was broken, you always see those shows on television when there's a, a lady that has, is having a baby and uh, it, you know, the two words, it's time. And when it's time, it's time. And I remember when the twins 
time came and it was it happened to be midnight one night and Melanie's like nudged me and said it's time and I remembered my training I'm like okay let's remember the training the training was if it happens after hours and you can't call the doctor's office you call the maternity ward at the hospital so I did that I got on the phone called the maternity ward and told them that my wife was 33 months pregnant with twins and we needed to, we were on the way. And they, and they laughed just like y'all are laughing until I realized that she was 33 weeks pregnant. And, um, and about uh, 48 hours later, um, two precious little girls were born uh, from the water, so to speak. This is the illustration that Jesus uses when he's talking to Nicodemus. The spiritual birth process is matched up with that because the seed is the word of God. Luke 8, 11 talks about this. This is the parable of the sower. The seed is the word of God and it is sown in various places. Hopefully it finds fertile ground. The fertile ground is the heart. Uh, the actual scripture reference here used in the lesson that we've taken this information from talks about a hardened heart. And just like the, the parable of the sower talks about the wayside, um, it, the seed doesn't always find purchase, so to speak. Uh, but if, if it does find fertile ground and a soft, loving heart, it can bring forth life. And when we are baptized into Christ, in that water, we are born again. We become a new creature, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. A beautiful verse that tells us that all things are new. All things have become new. So, um, very simple. Just as babies need milk, Christians need the Word of God to grow spiritually. That is the beginning of this, and we need to grow from that. But again, we mentioned, or the verse mentions all of these things, the, the malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, evil speaking. Those things are what we will categorize this evening as spiritual junk food. Now, um, I like my junk food just like everybody else, and I used to eat a lot more of it. I can remember back when I had an occupation that was a little more active, I could get away with that. And I used to work in the construction business a little bit, and we'd get on the job site about 7.30, and about 9 o'clock the boss would send somebody to McDonald's down the road, and I got in the habit every day of ordering the hotcakes and sausage. If y'all have ever had the McDonald's hotcakes and sausage, get two of those things of syrup and just pour it all over it and... Uh, that was good stuff. And then uh, I was single, of course, at the time, and it was either uh, well, lunch would be fast food, too, because you had to get something fast while you're working. Then dinner, uh, I can remember a couple of times when I ate all three meals at McDonald's. That's not a, that is not an endorsement, okay? Uh, but again, back then, uh, I could get away with that. Not today. Um, it was either ramen noodles or something from McDonald's, and I usually opted for McDonald's. But we can't, you understand the, 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 the image here, the metaphor of spiritual junk food. That, that stuff will, is not good nourishment for us these days uh, if we don't, if not in any moderation. Um, and there is also uh, a spiritual junk food, and this is what Peter lists in the verse. Malice, the desire to injure another person. He says, lay that aside, put it out of your heart. Deceit. The, the idea here is to catch with bait is something crafty or tricky. Uh, we're not supposed to deceive other people. Uh, hypocrisy, a deceptive attitude of saying uh, one thing and meaning another. And you've probably heard at some point the, the word in the original language talks about the idea of a play actor. Uh, and do, we, do we go through life play acting like we are, are interested in spiritual things when we're really not. Uh, envy, a feeling of unhappiness at another person's success. And this one we have to watch out for. It can creep in sometimes. We ever feel ourselves uh, maybe sometimes not being so happy for someone else when something good happens to them because it didn't happen to us. This is an envy. Uh, and, and particularly uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to rejoice together the same way that we that we weep together and mourn together. We should be happy for one another, and we should be happy uh, for, for other people when good things happen to them uh, rather than a feeling of unhappiness. And then finally, evil speaking. 
pretty self-explanatory. When we say hurtful things about other people, uh, these are all attitudes that are the, the junk food in our lives. And we need to lay those things aside so that the nourishment of the word can take effect in our lives. That's the idea of the spiritual junk food. In contrast to that, the spiritual milk that the child of God desires does not have worldly additives. It has all we need to sustain us. 2 Timothy 3.16, a very familiar scripture, all scripture, uh, I've heard it rendered, all that is scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped or furnished for every good work. This is what the Bible does for us. All of these ways that it can help us in our lives. Understanding what we're supposed to believe. Correcting us and reproving us when we need uh, to be put on the right path. And for instruction in righteousness. This is how uh, the Bible tells us how we are to live so that we will be equipped and furnished to go out into the world and do the work of God. God's word is, that is the spiritual milk. It is, it is pure and it is, it is wholesome uh, and, and ready for us to consume. Peter addresses uh, his audience as pilgrims in 1 Peter 1 verse 1. This idea is, is the, a lot like the idea we talked about this morning when we talked about that spiritual race. Peter uh, uses a little different image of a, a pilgrimage, a walk uh, a long journey uh, in life. And it's necessary for us to go on that walk to be spiritually fit. Tying these ideas together, the purity and the wholesomeness of the Word of God and its nourishment for us, spiritually speaking, and laying aside all of those uh, the spiritual junk food will help us to be uh, spiritually fit. Uh, First Peter, I'm sorry, First Timothy 4 verse 8 talks about physical fitness and, and spiritual fitness. It says, for body, bodily exercise profits a little. Uh, perhaps even uh, a more accurate rendering of that, for a little while. Uh, so it's not saying, uh, we, I've heard this said, bodily exercise profiteth little. In other words, it's not worth doing. I disagree with that. It is worth doing. I think God wants us to take care of our, our physical bodies. But it, it's for a little while because this body is going to go away one day. More importantly, godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. So we must maintain this spiritual fitness uh, if we are to stay on the path and 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 walk worthy uh, of that which we are called. So we have to understand and cultivate this idea within ourselves of spiritual fitness while we are pilgrims in this land. And that spiritual fitness will lead to spiritual growth. And everybody involved, uh, parents, children, friends and neighbors, we can all uh, grow uh, if, we, if we consume that wholesome word of God and, and, and put it to work in our lives. So in conclusion so far to this point, we understand that we're to desire the Word of God as newborn babes desire milk. That's a strong desire. This is the way God wants us to hunger and thirst for His Word. And we should seek after it that same way. Uh, and if we do that, we will grow thereby. We will, be, we will be spiritually fit and we will grow and continue our growth as we continue our pilgrimage through life. But what does that do for us and where does that put us? Well, it gives us a responsibility uh, because there is a legacy for us that we are to leave behind because the Word of God is a perpetual thing. It has been um, gathered together and, and, and saved for us in its present form and perfected for us, and now it is our duty to, to pass that on to others. And that is how it will continue. And it's, it, everybody in here, it's our responsibility to pass the Word of God on to others. We can't do that if we don't strongly desire it. We will not know how to pass it on to others. And we can't do that if we don't continue to grow spiritually. 
These are uh, the things that we, we should remember in our lives day to day that it never is a process that never ends. We, we will never fully understand every word uh, of every book of God's word, but we can do our best to understand as much as we are possibly capable of. And all of this should lead us to a, a more mature understanding. Hebrews 5, 12 to 14. You see it on the screen. You can read along in your Bibles or, or look up here. For Though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk, not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now, I actually almost hesitate to put this scripture in with a, uh, a, a discussion of desiring the milk of the word because it's really two completely different thoughts. This the milk, the, the wholesomeness of the, the, the spiritual milk uh, emphasizes the, the necessity of understanding and, and partaking of, uh, of Scripture in our lives so that we can grow. It's not saying that we start out with some, only some things that are understandable by somebody of a very simple mind. That's not it. We always need spiritual milk. But this Scripture in Hebrews 5, beginning in verse 12 does kind of delineate between the fact that if we only understand first principles and never grow past that, continuing on that foundation, but, but learning a, a, and understanding more deeply God's Word, then we're, we're not maturing a, as we should. And there's only one way to do that, and that is to desire the Word enough so that we stay in it. And we, we had a discussion in, in our men's class a couple of weeks ago, uh, and it was brought out that one of the best ways to, to learn the Bible is to put yourself in a position where you have to teach it to somebody. Uh, and that, I don't say that in a negative way. It's a wonderful thing to, to have the opportunity to teach God's Word. And in teaching different classes and, and other opportunities that I've had over the years, I've found that I always learn a lot more by doing that and, and benefit from it. In the, uh, in the lesson, um, the author actually talked about the concept of somebody, if you, if you imagine, and, and I, we won't stay on this long, we had a little fun with it in the youth class, imagine somebody, uh, a full-grown Christian in spiritual diapers uh, was the image that they, that's kind of a crazy, uh, silly thing, but sometimes we're in danger of that as, as, as adults of really never growing past that infant Christian stage. And we need to be wary of that. And we need to grow to a uh, more mature understanding of God's Word. And that, uh, to me, talks about um, or helps, uh, helps us uh, to, to, to kind of, I guess let me back up and say, one way we can sort of measure that is by our years as a Christian. I was born again at the age of 16 and began on that path to learn. There are some people who are converted much later in life, and, and there's no way that they should have learned as much as anyone else. But we all have our spiritual age, and uh, it's interesting. You can take a fitness test, uh, and they can tell you what your physical age is. And depending on your, uh, your fitness level, you, you know, if I'm 46 years old, and I'm not in real good shape, my physical age might actually be 56. Or if I'm in real good shape, it might be, uh, you know, 40 instead of 46. Give yourself a spiritual age test. How old are you as a Christian uh, with this idea of spiritual maturity? We're never to be weaned from the Word of God. We don't ever stop needing uh, the milk of the Word, but we should be able to move on to the solid food. Uh, we should be able to move on uh, to, the, to the, the meat of the Word. Just that as a baby moves from that formula or mi mother's milk to the solid food uh, in the baby jars that I can't imagine anyone would ever want to eat, but somehow they do, uh, we should move on uh, to the, the solid food. And this causes us to grow up. This causes us to grow up. Um, I'm looking at the clock because uh, I, uh, I wanted to read a little more from 
uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If you would uh, turn with me to that great chapter of the Bible. It's such a, uh, an important and wonderful, even poetic almost, chapter of God's Word. And uh, we talk about 1 Corinthians 13 so often because of its emphasis on love. But another emphasis in, in this has to do with spiritual maturity. And uh, Paul writes, he says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to, the poor, to feed the poor, and though give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind, Love does not envy, does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will fail, where there are tongues, they will cease, whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. And now the, the, the part that ties in specifically with our lesson. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am. I also am known. And now abide Faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. When I was a child, I acted like a child. Uh, and I specifically acted very much like a child. Uh, but now I'm an adult and I try to act like an adult. I put away childish things. We need to do that spiritually as well. And the thing I like about tying this into 1 Corinthians 13 is the, it, the emphasis on the idea of agape love in this chapter. This, this love, the kind of love that Christ had for us. Unconditional love. And this is the most mature love that we can have. If we come to a point where we can agape love our brothers and sisters in Christ, our family, our friends, our neighbors, all of the time, which is very, very difficult to do, that will mean that we have reached uh, a sense of spiritual maturity. And that we have uh, continued to grow as a Christian. Um, and we have big shoes to fill in that regard because Jesus was able to do that. First Peter 2.21, a favorite scripture of mine, for to this you were called since Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we are to follow in his steps. Big shoes to fill with regard to that. And remember we talked about the idea of a legacy, of, of, of leaving something behind, of helping other people um, uh, come to this, this idea of spiritual maturity. Um, so let's reflect on what we are leaving behind as a Christian and uh, ask ourselves if we're leaving a mature spiritual legacy. And I made this um, emphasis when we were looking at this lesson in class that these young little children uh, in the congregation or, or at camp or at school or wherever, they look up to the teenagers. And the teenagers look up to the adults, and we have to ask ourselves the question, who is looking at me, and am I setting a good example? And I love, I love this image on the screen here of, of father and son walking along, and, and the son is, is trying to be like dad. And that, that is a very powerful thing and an awesome responsibility for us as fathers. But the same applies to all of us as Christians because the people out there in the world are watching what we do, and we have opportunities to teach them. So it takes a little bit of self-examination, uh, and a great scripture in that regard is James 1, uh, 22 to 25, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the word, this one will be blessed in what he does. 
The idea that James gives us here very practically is, is a man observing, looking into a mirror, something we most of us do every morning. Uh, and do we, I know when I get up and look in the mirror, it's kind of scary. I have to do some work. Uh, but if I didn't pay attention to that and just walked out of the house, uh, that would be unwise. The idea here is when we, when we look into God's word as a mirror and it reflects on our lives, do we do anything about that? Do we do anything about that or do we just walk away and forget? Self-examination. Um, don't be a forgetful hearer of God's word. Be a doer. And if we do all of these things in closing this evening, we will have this eternal reward. We will have, uh, we have the word of God as our spiritual handbook to help us on this journey, to give us spiritual nourishment, to learn from and to pass along to others. Uh, and we can gain that reward if we do these things. We must continue to grow by the spiritual nourishment, and this eternal reward can be ours. Is it, is it, is it within the view of your future this evening, this eternal reward? Have you taken the steps to become uh, born again uh, as a Christian? And if you have, and you're, you haven't grown spiritually, or you have ceased to grow spiritually, then, then it could be time for, it is time for a change. And again, there's only, there's only one way to do anything. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. We've heard that. Just begin. Begin to study the Word of God. Take an opportunity to, uh, to, to, to engage in conversation with someone about the Word of God. Dig into a specific subject or book that you like. Grow in your understanding of how the Bible is put together and understand the message, the overall message of God's word for us, and, and you, will, you will mature uh, in Christ. Uh, so the lesson is yours this evening, and if you have any need to respond and call upon the help of this church, uh, then, then the invitation is yours. Please come as we stand and sing. There's a stranger at the door Let
Thank you, Johnny, for those two fine lessons today. I'll have to say that when I need a PowerPoint done, I know who to come to now. That was excellent. Victoria, that was a great job. You said it was Victoria that did it, right? I said it was Victoria, and then I found out it was Olivia. Olivia, I'm sure the other one's just as good, right? Well, if anyone at Last of Leaders done one, does a PowerPoint better than that, I'd like to see it, because that was excellent. For all others who had a public part in our worship, we're thankful for your efforts. For those that are visiting, we're glad you're with us. We take just a moment to fill out an attendance card. If you were not here this morning, leave that on the table in the foyer as you depart so that we may have a record of your visit. I remind you again of those that were on our prayer list this morning. Um, Al Jones is again with us tonight, but he's continuing his treatments, and he's got about another two and a half weeks or so to endure that, so certainly your encouragement and prayer is solicited. River Mead, the uh, grandson of Jackie Bearden, is uh, improving, and we hope that that will continue. Charles Overby, we understand, was not feeling well. He had to make a trip to the emergency room last week, but he's not here with us today, and certainly you're encouraged to keep him in your prayer. Evan Reed was not feeling well this morning. We also extend our sympathy to Stephen Reed and family in the death of his cousin, Amanda Reed. She passed away last week. And again, our sympathy to the Phyllis Glover family in passing of her cousin, Lonnie Rogers. This was also the brother-in-law of Evelyn Denny. Mr. Rogers' funeral was earlier today in Heard County. Are there others that we should mention? Our chili cook-off was last night. For those who have yet to know for sure, congratulations to Elise Tomlin again for being crowned chili champion last night. A gold necklace has been found, and if you are the owner of that necklace, see Joyce to retrieve it. Brothers Keepers, a, uh, Brothers Keepers groups are to be reorganized next month. We are looking for those who wish to be leaders of that, and if you want to continue to do it, hey, that's great as well. We'll certainly uh, take that into consideration and keep you working, and don't let us uh, wait till the last minute, if you would, please. Those that are interested, please let us know. We don't want to volunteer you to do it. How about that? Children's Home Food Truck will be here March the 5th. There's still a lot of uh, in stuff that's out there in the box in the foyer. There are other items that are needed. Consult your bulletin for those items, and they will be here March the 5th to pick up those items for the food truck children's home. Brothers Keepers Events, Group 1, this is Stephen and Lee's group, will meet next Sunday after the evening service here at the Fellowship Hall after evening worship service, bring finger foods for that event. Uh, Brother Tate Williams is going on a mission trip. If you'd like to give money, now again, this is giving money to the congregation that Brother Tate is going to visit in Peru. He has his money together for the transportation of his trip and so forth. This is money that would be taken or sent ahead of him for strict benefit of the congregation there in Peru. So if you want to help in that effort, make your check to the Bremen, Bremen Church of Christ and market Peru, and we'll make sure that it gets to the proper place. If you wish to view the debate that our brother Brad Harab had with a gentleman named Jim Miller on morals, it can be seen on GBN tomorrow, Monday, February the 20th at 8 a.m., and it will be rebroadcast at 7 p.m. tomorrow on GBN. You can view that debate between Brad Harab and Jim Miller. The gospel meeting that began today at the Lineville, Alabama congregation, Jim Mural, the speaker, continues through Wednesday the 22nd. The next area-wide singing is at the Cedartown Congregation. It is coming up this Friday, this coming Friday, February the 24th, beginning at 7 p.m. at Cedartown. The Yes Weekend will be in Valdosta for those that are going. Hopefully you've already signed up because I think it's too late to sign up now. But that will also be this weekend. We'll have more specific detail for those that are going this Wednesday. But again, that will be departing uh, this coming Friday the 24th, 25th, and be back Sunday afternoon sometime. Ladies' Day at Ironiton, Alabama will be this coming Saturday the 25th. Weekend after next, there's a gospel meeting, a weekend gospel meeting, Friday, Saturday, Sunday at the Waco Congregation, Brother B.J. Clark, March 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. 
That weekend also, there's a men's leadership seminar in Lake City, Florida. There's a group from here that's going. We have about five or six at this time, but if you want to go, let us know. We've got it arranged to where it won't cost hardly anything, just supper down there and supper back. We've got lodging arranged, and they'll feed us breakfast and lunch. We'll leave uh, Friday mid-afternoon, get down there, spend the seminar on Saturday, and be back here late Saturday evening. So if you want to go, let me or one of the elders know as soon as you can tonight, preferably, so that we can make specific arrangements. But again, that is uh, Friday week, March the 2nd, and come back late Saturday, March the 3rd. There's a gospel meeting uh, two weekends, or two, two weeks from today, March three weeks, beg your pardon, three weeks from today, March the 4th through the 8th, Ken Thomas, the speaker at West Georgia. That's quite a slate of events. Is there anything that I've overlooked? Lord's Supper is kept prepared for those that wish to observe it. Once we stand to sing, go through this door, second door on the left, and there will be someone there waiting to serve you. Our next service here is Wednesday at 7 p.m., and we hope to see each other at that time. Should we mention anything else? Final song. 234 will be our final song. 234, if you'll stand, we'll sing and be dismissed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day that you've blessed us with, for the opportunities that have been ours together here to lift up these songs of praise, to petition thee in prayer, and to study thy word, to have fellowship one with another. We pray that each one who's assembled here today has grown spiritually, that our light may shine throughout this week, that this community may see you within us. Father, we're especially mindful of those who are not here today. For those who are traveling, we pray that you bless their work that they're doing and Bring them back to us safely. For those who are sick, Father, we pray that you'd bless the means being used to restore their health. And as our servants, Father, may we do the things that might help in this case. Father, continue with us through this week. May we do the things that you'd have us to do. Continue with us in Christ's name. Amen.